myself. My name is Lillian. And I'm awfully glad that you're here, especially when there's a question perhaps in your mind of, gosh, this Hatha Yoga series has been on the air for quite some time. Can I join in, in her class in the middle of it? <clears throat> Will I be just drowning if I do, or totally out of my, my physical capabilities? Well, I like to feel that if you are a beginner, that this is a very good time for you to start. There will be some things in certain classes that, yes, definitely are, are too difficult if you haven't exercised for many, many years. And, but I, I try and give good warnings for ahead of time and encourage you to watch and to perhaps take more time in your own daily practice. And then when the series comes around again, because many times this class, for instance, is repeated at another time, you'll see how, what sort of a change has happened within you what sort of progress that you really have made. And many of you who've written me all the marvelous mail that I've gotten from so many of you that tell me about your progress and the change within you and what some, for some of you, even what your doctor has said after sort of the before and the after, uh, what you were like even a year ago and what you are like now and the real progress that you can make by watching this series. And it makes me so very, very happy. Hatha Yoga is for you, especially if you're interested and especially if you want to learn. Just because there's a glass between us really doesn't make all that much of a difference. It's a little bit different than a real class, but it is something that really works and will work in your life wherever there's an opportunity or wherever there's an openness in you. And if it's for physical reasons, for mental reasons, for intellectual pursuits of thoughtfulness in, in a philosophical sense, or deepening of the, of the spiritual understandings. All of this is available to us if there's an opening in us. So anyway, I hope if this is your first time, by all means, let's start together. And I'll stop you if I think it's uh, going to be a little bit too much. There might be something in today, definitely, that will be a little bit too much. But this, this next thing, absolutely not. Let's remove some of the tension now that's lodged in the shoulders and in the neck. Even if it's the morning and you really haven't gotten into your day, it doesn't make any difference at all. This is a, oh, it's not the most classical yoga we, we do on the series, but it's just massaging the muscles of the, of the shoulder area. And you can do this totally clothed. And uh, just slip your hand underneath your shirt or whatever, so you grab a hold of skin. And you just uh, grab a hold firmly of the muscle of the shoulder, the trapezius muscle, firmly, and then pull the fingers towards the palm of your hand, release. Pull and release. Be firm about I'm going to turn slightly so you can see what I'm doing here. I grab a hold of, my sh of the muscle and I pull and release. And I pull. And this is a firm motion and I'm really getting deeply into that shoulder muscle. And then release. And then do this on the, on the other shoulder, all right? Grab a hold. I'd like you to get a hold of the skin here so you can, it's slightly warm. And pull and release. Remember to do this at another time, perhaps in your office when, when the phones get ringing a lot. All right, and then release and relax and observe. This is the yogic part of it, is to observe the warmth, the feeling of circulation that immediately comes to your shoulder area. Feel that? Good. That's the basic of most of the Hatha Yoga postures, is increase of circulation. This is why it equals better health, almost immediately. Drop now your chin to your throat, sitting up straight, and now bring your chin up to the ceiling and have a good stretch now on the throat area, removing any tension from the throat. Raise the chin up, swallow first, head back. And now head straight. Also, this is a firming action going on now for the throat and for the chin area, for the double chin. Raise the chin up once more. Now bring the lower jaw over your upper jaw. Reach with the lower lip and head straight. It looks, it feels rather awkward, but it feels rather good then when you're, when you're done, doesn't it? Nobody else can see you, so you could sort of be a little awkward. That's okay. Good. Now drop your chin to your throat and bring your right ear, right shoulder. And we're going to do just a very simple circle with the head. And we are sort of oiling the upper neck, just making a slow, smooth, circle no pain here if there's any discomfort you can hold your head or not do it at all please 
Drop your, let's go in the opposite direction. Drop your chin to your throat, left ear, left shoulder, and back. Smooth movement now, right ear, right shoulder, chin to your throat, and head straight. Something else to do, which is over the head arm clasp. Now, by the way, you don't have to sit like I'm sitting. Don't let your knees or your legs go to sleep or your knees bother you. Please sit in a chair if this is very uncomfortable. It won't be after you've studied with me for a while. But, all right, this is a little warning here. Now, I'm gonna turn backwards. We're going to do over the head arm clasp and you do it with me, all right? Just bring the arm now, the right arm up and scratch your spine. Scratch your spine, then bring the left arm behind and try and have the fingertips touch to, cut, touching together here. And as you're holding, if you can grab a hold of the fingertips, pull down on one hand and bring the, show, the uh, elbow more to the back of your head. And then release. Now let me just turn around here. I'm going to turn back to where I was. And let me show you something. When you bring your right arm up, how many of you had the elbow? Uh, well, this is where your elbow should be. You see where my finger is? There's about three inches difference here. And if you want to help yourself into a posture, just bring the hand that's free over and pull the elbow just towards the center of your head. No pain. And that will help you with even more of a stretch. All right, now go in the opposite direction. Opposite direction. Now, you can lean forward a little bit, sort of wiggle yourself in the position. Now, at first, the under part of the arm is quite stiff. That's the reason why you're not getting the stretch that you'd like. But if you just reach up with the hand that's free and gently pull it more towards the center of your head, it, is, it really is easier. Then reach around behind, lean forward if you need to slightly, clasp a hold of your fingers, then sit straight and you're in over the head arm clasp. All right, and then release both hands on the knees. And how many of you, first of all, before I say anything, how does that feel? <sighs> I know, it feels a little, a, little, a little stiff perhaps in the arms. Well, that's why you're here. We're here to, to really start, well, putting some, I hate to say putting some youthfulness into the joints, but there's no reason that we have to be stiff in the joints as we, as we become. And sometimes we're really, we're, we are born this way. We, but we, there is nothing that we can't do as far as, oh, turning this, uh, turning this around a bit, getting some, some more elasticity into the joints, into the cartilage that we are, that gets stiff with time, and as I said, with diet, and with um, just how we are born. All right, now, uh, let's work now with the pelvic area and working again with tension and relieving some of the tension in the body. Lie down, all right, lie down, and observe what you've brought with you. Now, I've kept you sitting up for some time, and what's, what is this, what does the body feel like right now? And this is a, also a very yogic point of view, is to observe what you have brought with you. And if you find any negative, you can, with, with seeing it, then you can let it go. If we're so, uh, if we're so in, up close to it, then it's very hard to see and to let it go. But if in this quietness of your own room, with the phone taken off of the hook, and the feet uh, well apart, the quietness of your room around you, you can observe and witness how this body feels, how if you need to let go any tension or any fatigue, and then the rest of Hatha Yoga are the tools to make this happen, to let this happen. Working now with the pelvic area, with lower back discomfort when there's no pain or no, uh, nothing wrong with your back is very normal for most of us. And this exercise, by bringing the knees to your chest, hands out to your side in a T position, and just rock the knees from side to side. This starts to loosen up your lower back gently and easily, side and to side. Now flex your feet past. And now bring both knees down underneath your right arm. All right, rest them there. Just rest your feet on the floor, knees. Now the lateral motion is going to start to take place in your spinal column, but slowly and with care, there should be no pain and it's perfect for a beginner. Place both shoulders now on the floor. All right, place both shoulders on the floor. And now look with your eyes, let your chin go over your left shoulder, way around over your left shoulder and hold. 
Take a breath and stretch the front part of your body. Exhale, bring both knees to your chest and now both knees down to the left. If you just look here, you can just glance at your set for a second, you can see what's going on in my spine. And that torque movement is healthy for your spinal column, which is in turn healthy for your entire nervous system. And if you just hold, you can really get some stretch in it. It doesn't look like anything if you're just watching. So, so come on down and try this. This is very easy and it feels marvelous. Both shoulders on the mat, class. Look way over your right shoulder and then take a breath, inhale. And here you expand and open up then all the ribs. Good, and exhale, bring both knees to your chest. Place the hands now behind the back of your knees. And we're going to do now a rock and roll, a warm up, a stimulation again for the nervous system and a, an energizer that feels good is just to lift your head and get, can you get yourself moving? And if you're new at this, if you're new at this, you could be, the feeling that I want you to have is, watch here for a second, is to come up into a sitting position. That, that usually helps you to understand what I mean if you're a beginner. All right, round the back and come up into a sitting position. Exhale, go back, inhale, up. Exhale, go back and inhale, up. And one more time, go back, exhale. And now, the lower back on the floor. This now is a little bit more intermediate, but I think if you were a beginner, you could do it with these. Right leg straight out in front of you. Turn on to your right side. All right, we're gonna do crocodile. Turn on to your right side. Bring the right foot on top of your, I'm sorry. Bring the left knee onto the floor and the left, the left foot is on top of your right kneecap. All right, are we all there? The foot on top of the kneecap, the knee is on the floor. Now place the palms of the hands straight out in front of you. All right, now the palms of the hands, that would be my right hand, is in line with my right shoulder. Palms of the hands straight out in front of you. Class, push your right foot back behind you slightly. All right, now watch this movement of the crocodile. I'm going to open the crocodile jaws. All right, open the jaws of the crocodile, and I'm going to, with my left hand, reach for the wall behind me. All right, I'm gonna reach for the wall behind me, and then bring both hands now back into your T position. This is a little bit more extensive a posture than the one we just did. Lift your knee now slightly off the ground. That's your bent knee, that's the left knee, so you allow both shoulders to come on the floor. All right, both shoulders are on the floor, Palms are flat, and the knee at this point is slightly off the ground. Hold the position now, and here we're going to relax in the posture. This is a challenge of learning to relax with intention. Press your hips forward and bring the knee that's bent further down towards the floor. Now, you go to your maximum, and with your hand that's free, can you place it then on top of your knee? and just with gentle leverage, press the knee to the floor. And that's how you get yourself in the posture, never pushing or thrusting, go slowly. And then you hold, and you press the hips forward, then you always release slowly also. The jaw of the crocodile now closes, you bring the left hand, let it scrape the floor as if you were circling a half moon position or a half moon circle, palms of the hands on the floor. Lie on your back in Sarvasana and observe. Observe now the feeling within your spine, within the whole left side of your body, right side of your body, closing the eyes and allowing any tension that builds in the posture now to release, especially as you breathe. Exhale the air now through your nostrils out. And inhale, breathe deeply and slowly in, breathing in energy into your body, and exhale slow, smooth exhalation out. And on your exhalation, press the arch out of your lower back, out, 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 and breathe normally and in a relaxed fashion. Now class, turn yourself now onto your left side. All right, turn onto the left side, you're going to bend, let's start again because I think I should probably start you on your back. You're on your back, bend your right knee and place your right foot on top of your left knee. Now turn over on 
to your left side. The right knee is on the floor. Both palms of the hands now are flat on the floor as you were before in that crocodile position. And push your left foot back. You're going to work now on this spinal column, on your, the torque motion of your lower back to relieve lower back pain. Go at it slowly. Now with your right hand, make a half moon circle. Bring the right arm, stretch it up behind you and following it with your eyes, then into a T position, right? You're in your T position. Release the stretch that's in your knee, that's on the floor, that's your right knee, and let it come up slightly. So you are, allow your shoulders to be out flat on the floor. All right, now you press the pelvis forward and with your left hand, reach around, Oh, well, you can't see it, I know it, but with my left hand, I'm putting it on the top of my right knee. And I press the, the pelvis forward, look way over my right shoulder, and then you relax. And you hold the position, and don't allow your shoulders to come off the ground, though. That's part of doing the crocodile properly. The knee, a few inches is fine, but shoulders in the it should stay on the floor. Relax in the tension class. Relax your jaw, your thigh muscles. All right, and then release. Make a large half circle with your right hand, bringing them back, palms together, and then lie on your back in your crocodile, or in your sarvasana position, relaxation. And again, once more, exhale the air through the nose, exhale out, inhale, breathe deeply. Exhale, slow, smooth exhalation out and out and out. Bend the knees, raise the arms now over your head, inhaling. Exhale, raise arms, head and shoulders, come up in to then a sitting position. And just, just watch me for a second. I'm going to work a little bit on halasana, your plow position. And because the upper neck is not a joint, you, I like to encourage you to uh, bring a mat with you to class or a, a folded towel that will go underneath your shoulders as we've as we've done before, and halasana would not be for a beginner. This would not be a beginner posture. This would be after many, many weeks of conditioning, of using different uh, helpers that I've used in the different series. And if you've missed it, just continue watching it, really. We usually do repeat ourselves many, many times. So halasana is what we're going to work on today. And if you do not have your mat, that's all right, because in this class, I won't keep you up too long. But when you practice on your own, or perhaps when you do come to class from now on, bring a mat with you or a bath mat or something we can use. <clears throat> now, your preparation for the asana has been your rock and roll. It's been also your many, many weeks of being with this class. So please, if you're a beginner, please just watch. Otherwise, and you've been working on halasana, wonderful. I like to, uh, well, let me see what I should do here. First, we're going to do, I think, halasana, and then I'll show you a variation, which is sort of fun to do. The neck is a, one of the po parts of this posture that gets a, a strong workout because of the body, the, the weight of the body. Let's do, please, beginners lie down and do this exercise with me as a preparation for the months to come as far as working with Halasana. Everybody do this together. Place your hands on your thighs. Raise the head up and just hold as far as it will go, just as far as the chin and the throat are close together. Then turn and look over your right shoulder. Your ear should be about an inch off of the floor. Hold. Back to center. That is, you're looking directly up to your ceiling. Look over your left shoulder. Your ear is a half an inch off of the floor. Back to center. And then relax. I would suggest you do that three more times as a preparation or a strengthener for your neck. And if your neck aches, the muscles ache, those are muscles working, and that's good. That's where the weakness is. And you need to work more on strengthening the neck muscles. Halasana position. Class, okay, will you repeat it now? What does, what's the Sanskrit terminology for plow? You tell me. Halasana, good. And let's try and refer to it then by its proper name, because I think that's important too. Palms of the hands now flat on the floor. And if you've never uh, done this before, why don't you watch? 
We're going to, I'm going to raise the feet so they come back over my, the top of my head, but we work it slowly, inhaling, raising the legs up, then pressing the palms of the hands to the floor and bringing my shoulders so the shoulders are rotated inwards, and then keeping the, the spinal column straight, slowly lower the feet to the floor. Now class, if you're just watching and you're inexperienced and you're just watching, we are trying to not to curve your spine. You're trying to straighten your spine as much as possible in this posture. Bringing the shoulder blades together so you protect even more your upper neck and you hold in halasana. The knees are straight, the toes are turned under and you hold in this straight position and then you come down slowly and smoothly. In this position, you don't uh, collapse out of the position, flexing your feet, then lowering the legs slowly, <clears throat> and then relax. There are many, many benefits, of course, to halasana. The abdominal area, the glands beneath the, uh, the organs beneath the abdominal area, the strengthening for then the toning that goes on in for halasana. All this is really, uh, uh, they're only part of some of the benefits of it but it's really worth it, worth your time to spend working at it. And I love doing any inverted postures always in my daily routine for myself. Klaus, let's try working on it again because the straightening of the spine is one of the finesse of doing the posture more perfectly than, we, than you've done it before. And that's always what I work on myself too. Palms of the hands now flat on the floor with control, inhale. Exhaling now, press the arch out of your back, lift the legs and then lift the hips up off of the floor. Rotate your shoulders towards your spinal column before you push the legs or the feet to the floor. Straighten your knees and then with control and constantly trying to straighten your spine. No rounded spine, try to bring your hip bone to your thigh. This will help you and then come into your halasana position. Open your eyes, look at your own body. You want to have your pelvic bone coming towards your thigh so the spinal column is straight. My, my stripe should be absolutely straight. And then, now holding the posture for a few more seconds, if you are a beginner, come down out of the posture, all right? And if you've been with me for a while, let's do a feet well apart in a V. Do a nice stretch in a V and feet then together, toes together and lower slowly again. <clears throat> Come down slowly, vertebra at a time, keeping the knees straight and then keeping the arch out of the back. Come down slowly. Now relax for a, just a few seconds and observe. All right, and then take two deep breaths. Exhale the air through the nostrils out. Inhale, breathe deeply. And exhale out. And just turn your head here for a second. I'm going to sit up, but I, you just turn your head here for a second. Now, are there any questions about Halasana? I'm sure if we were to talk, there would be plenty. In our Lilius Yoga and You book, there are more questions and answers about the different postures that we have. And Halasana is, of course, in it. And I can't, I'm sure, underline enough how important it is that, uh, that you work your way gradually and slowly into it. And next class that we do, I'd like to have you be sure that you bring a mat, and then the next class we'll work on another variation that's really fun. So be sure that you add now halasana to your daily routine. And uh, you'll see how the spine will really start to stretch out. And this will help you too, until it's down perfectly. All right, class, if you've set up, lie down. Otherwise, lie down in your sponge position. <clears throat> the feet are well apart. The palms are turned upwards. And tuck your sh the wings towards your spinal column. And let your head rock from side to side and side to side. Lift your hips up a half an inch off the ground and then let them flop to the floor. And tuck the pelvis, press the arch out of your lower back by tightening the seat muscle and then release. Close your eyes and really let go. Really open yourself up as if you can feel the air that flows around you. 
and that which flows within you as if they really all meet. And even the pores open up to allow this exchange to happen, to allow this energy to flow through you as it flows around you. The nostrils open also and allow this breath as a wave from an ocean to flow into you. And it feeds as it flows into you. And as, as you exhale, you exhale out. Any negative flows out. Any fatigue flows out. And inhale, breathe deeply and slowly in. Exhale, slow, smooth exhalation out. And really relax deeply. Feel what that sensation of relaxation feels like. Relaxing your toes all the way up to your hips. And you just talk to the legs and you say, legs, I want you to relax deeply. Then wait to feel the sensation of, of the hollowness within the legs as the legs respond. And then into your arms from your fingertips to your shoulders. Let them lengthen into your chest between any tension between your shoulder blades. Just let it go. And then into your facial area. Practice the art of relaxation, of really letting go, as we did in the beginning, of letting go well, when there's tension, and take it with you on into your day. Thank you, class. Namaste. Thank you.